What is up guys, my name is Meeps and welcome back for yet another League of Legends video. So today we are playing one of my absolute favorite ADCs of all time. We are playing Kai'Sa. And yeah, like this champion, the reason why she's kind of one of my favorites is first of all, she has a super cool kit and a really fun playstyle. In my opinion, her playstyle feels kind of similar to Vayne's. And as you guys know, Vayne is my all-time favorite ADC, so it's not a big surprise that this one is uh, pretty, pretty, pretty close up there. Um, anyway, this video will solely focus on the macro and the decision-making uh, process of playing Kai'Sa, meaning how to play the champion in the early, mid, and late game. It will not at all focus on the mechanics if you need to learn the mechanics and you don't know the the abilities the combos the advanced combos the flashes like the flash plays then go ahead to my other video link in the description in that one i just fully explain everything you need to know mechanically about kaisa this video is solely gonna focus on basically the uh the what do you call decision making process off playing her so basically what you want to do and when you want to do it and why um so so generally just like the early mid and late game anyway we'll just kind of get straight on into it just a slight side note if you are new in here make sure to subscribe down below join in on our awesome community and smash that like button if you enjoy this one find it helpful or like it at all and uh, yeah if you want to see me live go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live i stream every single friday Anyway, as we come into the game here, then generally what you want to do as we come in in the lane at the very first wave is you want to try and push. You want to make sure that you get the level two power spike. I will try and catch it up here because seeing as I just had to do kind of an intro, then we got a little laid out the gate with that. But I think we'll still manage to do it right here. We'll get the level two and we should be able to actually punish this guy super duper hard. So right here, getting some good damage off. And they are going to use more or less everything they have. I will pop my heal just as a safety precaution. But this should pretty much be worth it. Um, so, so far, so good. But the reason why you want to go for this power spike is, first of all, uh, Kai'Sa is a very easy champion to get the level 2 power spike with. Due to her Q really allowing her to, to shove the lane fairly quickly. So what you want to do at the very first level is you want to make sure that you get the level two power spikes you want to use your q on the minions in order to uh to establish the push but you don't want to over push it so if the enemy does not kind of counter push then be a little aware that you just get level two before them don't go push them under turret because that way you won't have the option of going for something like a level two engage if uh if you have the combo for it or if you have the pressure for it. Because if you get level 2 before they, they do. Then you have a couple of different options. First of all. If you have a good engage on your support. Then you can go for a level 2. Uh, level 2 engage. Otherwise you can actually go ahead. And try and push in front of them. And actually uh, shove them away. And lose some minions. Just by you being in front of their minion Or in front of uh, your own minions. Um, there's a couple of different things there you can do. Right here, we're actually getting a lot of poke from this guy. I know for a fact this guy doesn't have flash. We will go for it back here, and it's not going to be too terrible. Hopefully. This is not the ideal back, but I know for a fact that I won't be able to uh, to set up a better situation right now. So we'll back off. We'll get this. We'll get ourselves a potion and a control ward. And... As we come down in this lane, these guys are most likely not going to have backed. I'm going to lose probably like two or three minions from this, but not more. Maybe Twitch did, did just back, uh, but it's it's a weird back for him. No, he didn't. All right. Yeah, it would have been very weird if he did. So we'll just kind of move back down in lane. We've lost like two or three minions from this. So this is not a terrible back at all. Like this is super fine for us. We come back down. Now we have item advantage. We have control ward going for a level three. Uh, back sometimes can be pretty good if you can set up the way for it. Um, what I need to do now is it's very important that I re-establish some pressure onto this lane and ensure that this uh, Twitch does not back. Because if he does, we're basically neglected or uh, our own back. And sadly, I lost a couple of minions, but it should all be fine. So right here 
if he backs at this point he's gonna start losing too much so he's forced to stay i'm gonna be popping my potion we're gonna try and just get some of the pushing power back and there we go all right so with kaisa something that's really important especially as you start trading is that you want to try and use your q such that it only hits the enemy champion the way that your carthian rain works is that it hits anything inside its uh, radius like it, it spreads or spreads between all targets but if you only have one target in it all the missiles hit that target which is what you want to go for uh when you want to hit it on champions you always want to try and position yourself uh in engages in a way that ensures that you're only going to be hitting the target or targets that you're actually going for so right here we are going to go for a little bit of poke we're probably not going to be able to kill anybody from this most likely oh maybe just slightly but it's very close but a worthy trade okay she actually died to ignite i'm impressed i did not think she would but uh this is super fine like we are at a good spot and this back giving us two long swords actually just kind of ensured that no matter what they would not be able to win the engages so if they took an engage that would be a huge mistake on their part and again right here twitch is taking some really poor trades that he really shouldn't go for so we'll just kind of keep this pressure i'll push this and then we will go for uh for a ward we have more control ward and we have or or yellow ward but yeah here in the early game there are some diff Ooh. i'm not gonna go for an all in at all we'll back out here we see that uh the shaker was here as well so we are actually just gonna kind of fool them into staying there we go sweet good job shaco but kaisa is kind of an interesting uh champion here in the early game she's not a bad early game champion but he's she's not the very best either but she scales super well into late game and she is kind of what you can call a hyper carry she's really really cool as you get into the late game she has a lot of like mechanical outplay she can do with her which is the reason why i really like comparing her to Vayne. um but here in the early game she in my opinion is a bit more stable than Vayne. she's a bit more intuitive and easy to play because of her ecarthian reign that basically allows her to push waves a little bit easier and kind of keep things under wraps while Vayne requires a bit more but that doesn't make Kai'Sa less good at all like Kai'Sa is in absolutely insane um but what you need to think about when playing Kai'Sa is her positioning in terms of hitting her Q such that all of the missiles hit the same target is what really creates the extra burst apart from her plasmas um so this is really what you want to kind of think around you want to try and use this to your advantage so when you're going for an engage you want to try and position yourself such that this one basically hits uh oh, such, such that this basically only hits uh the target in which you're going for uh so we're gonna go for a w here we will be able to basically jump down here and get a free kill should be able to at least okay she is just gonna survive because of that exhaust but overall uh it was it was it was fine like i thought we would probably be able to get that but the exhaust just saved her life all right so far so good gonna use this gonna be able to do a good trade here not gonna be able to finish again so raka healing is just keeping it up so i think pretty soon we will be going for an uh whoop for an execution that's calling anyway talking about a bit about which champions arc can be a little difficult for kaisa it's mostly champs like in the laning phase draven lucian tristana uh brand and nautilus like these champions can be a bit a little bit difficult uh especially nautilus with his old ensures that even if you use your old properly then you are whoop, we're gonna get out of this all right so that's twitch twitch old we'll reset this uh, when he uses his ult, then your repositioning with your own ult is not going to really going to be worth anything. Because uh, it's going to hit you regardless. So this is something that you kind of need to think about. Like picking Kai'Sa into Nautilus can be really difficult. And a lot of the other champs that kind of counters her are much the same as with Vayne. It is champions that can either out-trade her 
or can basically shove the lanes and then then poke her uh, while she's trying to farm but again a champion like kaisa very much comes down to uh comes down to surviving and kind of just uh going at least equal in lane because if you do so you're gonna be in a really good spot with her she is an overall really freaking strong champion uh so right here we'll go for a quick back again actually i think we'll go for this to use a bit more of a gold there we go and we'll go back down here make sure we get a control ward and start keeping a big bit more an eye on where their jungler is because he might start focusing down here because at this point we are slowly going to start snowballing which is really nice um so we can see right now that graves is in the river he has his red buff meaning he just cleared the bot jungle but he's moving back down there no wait he's going back up okay so this should free us up for a couple of minutes without having to uh, worry too much about the jungler and we only have to worry about the mid laner all right so we're gonna start actually uh freezing lane pretty soon here gonna i just want to make sure we establish vision there we go very nice so right here i think i'll just go down i'll actually take a couple of trades with him i'm not gonna go all in at all but we'll, we'll just poke him just slightly and right here as i kind of expected we do need to keep an eye out for their uh for their cassadin but overall again really nice trade but yeah as you can see with kaisa uh it's really rare actually when i max your e not your w that's a misclick um as you can see with kaisa it really comes down to you don't really want to be the initiator generally you just kind of want to wait for your team to initiate your support to initiate you don't have any cc by yourself but you can use oh she's is pretty much oh wow miss that i'm gonna flash that q from graves we're gonna be coming back around here for another one there we go sweet uh but you you want to make sure that you back up around your team really quickly in the laning phase then pretty often you are going to be using your old asher support initiates or if you're close enough you're just going to be using it as kind of a um a, a gap closer in in like when the enemy flashes uses their dash or something else or if it's a really close fight then you want to use it for the shield um because that can be really really effective but right here so far things are just going pretty good we're uh, we're hanging in there our farm is pretty decent and we're just making sure that we capitalize on these these small advantages that we are getting all the time and they're slowly starting to stack up we're now 180 farm uh, 118 farm uh and we have two kills and three assists so this should pretty easily scale out really well we will be able to finish our kraken slayer on the next back which will just honestly uh make us really freaking strong and we'll actually be able to even though we are not an initiate champion we'll be able to assassinate people or assassinate their bot lane with it so i'll buy a new control ward i think just for uh, for a little sustain we'll buy an extra potion we don't really need it at this point but i'd rather just take it with me and not need it than feel like i need it in order to stay for another wave or something else so we'll move back down and so far things are going really really well we're we're hanging in there if you're having a hard laning phase then don't worry about going all in for fights just kind of sustain try and get as much cs as possible uh you are going to scale really well as you start moving into the late game but if you're doing well then try and push that advantage still wait kind of wait for your supports to initiate fights unless you know for a fact that you that you can kill them that mostly just comes with experience uh you don't want to be using your e too often for the initiate pretty often you want to be using it as kind of a oh, okay this is a misposition by her we can actually we can punish this really hard there we go sweet thank you 
Yeah, that was just a super misposition by that Soraka. She literally just killed her teammate. All right, so we have Graves coming down here, but we are really, really strong at this point. We're making sure we use the Q while we can just hit that target alone, poking a little bit with the W. And like, they're in such a rough spot in the bot lane right now. But your E is really good for reposition repositioning and dodging uh, attacks. And as you get it leveled up, you will also get the invis once you get enough attack speed. And that will really help you out. So it's something you want to be a little careful with using. Uh, you do want to use it for attack speed also kind of early. If you know you're going for full all in. But if they have some kind of skill shot or attack that you need to be able to dodge. Don't use it before you need to dodge that. Because otherwise you are going to put yourself in a really, really bad position. All right, so right here, we'll just take these minions and we'll kind of back off. Graves is here again. So for now, I feel like it's going to be a good time to back. We're going to start building into our hurricane. Overall, our items are looking really good. Our backs are looking really good. Uh, we're getting a lot from every single back. We'll get this one. I'll buy extra short and we'll get ourselves a blue side or a far side ward. So as we move into the mid to late game now, things are about to change a bit. Uh, the thing is that Kai'Sa is an ADC. And as most other ADCs, her general role doesn't change too much. What you need to do as you go into the mid to late game is, first of all, you don't really want to be running around alone unless you are in a safe place. Meaning, as an example, where we are right now, yes, my support is mid lane. But this is a safe spot for me to be in right now. We have vision on four people or three people here, one up there. So at a pure maximum, there can only be uh, one person where I am. So I'm going to move up here. I don't think I'm going to go for this engage, but I might be able to hit her and just get that kill. Thank you. Uh, that was really nice of her. And I'm going to hide in this bush, put down a control ward. Okay, I see that he is over. Oh, they're actually overstaying again. And I'm really strong here. So we'll just be able to pick up another free kill. Like these guys are to the point of almost griefing us at this point. But that is just super nice. This is one of the cool things about Kai'Sa is you have such great, great uh, potential to actually... Ooh, that was... He fooled me. I'm backing out. This was a poor play by me. She has so great potential to actually catch up to, to uh, her opponents because of her E and because of her old. But... As we move into the mid and late game, be very careful with using your old and your E offensively. Because if you do, you have nothing defensively. It's your only, your only tools defensively is to use your, your E and your old. But of course, you can use them from time to time, especially as like... If you can use it both offensively and also as a defensive mechanism at the same time, that's where Kai'Sa really strives. Like, that's kind of the thing with her, where she's like, she's kind of a unique one. This is a really good back because we upgrade, can upgrade our Ikarthian rain. So we need to go back down here. The uh, Drake is back up. But you want to, in the mid to late game, and especially in team fights, you still want to be playing the backline, meaning you want to go for the closest target to you always the closest target with kaiser there is kind of a twist where sometimes you can go for a dive on the back line but oh whoop i did not i did not see this at all i was oh save me all right we're just gonna try and run away as much as we can put down a w and help out a little bit we are gonna be a little careful here three seconds till we have our old and things are gonna Look a little bit better for us can just potentially then we can reposition get something on this guy four seconds okay i'm gonna go with oh that was really nice that was such a good old by rice but in the mid to late late game you want to stay as the back line is very very important and then hit the closest target if you are really far ahead and maybe if the, their front line is, is diving you and you don't really have any tools to get them off you and you won't be able to kill them fast enough then you can use your ult to basically reposition onto the their back line if you feel like or if you know for a fact that you can more or less assassinate them instantly with your q 
or if they're out of position you can also do that in the mid to late game again you want to stay safe you are an adc you are very squishy so you want to make sure that you don't just get caught random places so stay with your support stay with the teammate pretty much at all times ensure that you don't uh, get locked down you can see right now we're just summing up so much gold if they lock me down at this point i'm 650 uh gold for them which is a lot like this is it's a ton of gold so play really safe hang out you are a you are a an adc so your purpose is to do as much damage as possible when playing together with your teammate with kaisa kind of like with vein you can also from time to time go for small assassinations if you know it's a champ that you win one-on-ones with like for me right here i know that i will win one-on-ones with twitch i know that for like 100 percent sure so if i see twitch being alone while i have vision on all four others and i see him pushing too far let's say up here in the top lane then use, using my w on him and jumping to him with my old or you running up there and assassinating him surprising him coming out of my e then that can be really good you are going to win those fights but only only go for those if you know where everybody else is and you know for 100 that there's no chance that he will win all right so right here pretty soon i want to be looking for a back because i can finish my hurricane which is going to be a huge item do remember when playing adc that's still one of the most important things for you is that you don't sit around on like 2000 gold or 3000 gold because your gold is not worth anything like getting two or three kills doesn't matter if you just sit on that gold because like literally it's worth nothing before you spend it uh it's not going to make you stronger except the xp the advantage that you probably have which is not going to be enough to securely win things you want to make sure that you do get your backs and you do get uh everything you need so let's get two control wards here and again we are in a really nice spot with 507 187 farm if we're we're kind of just like we're hanging around just around 9 cs a minute which is pretty decent especially for a solo duo queue uh this can be pretty sometimes pretty difficult to uphold because your team is going to make it difficult for you to farm but so far things are looking pretty well uh we're gonna be really strong and for team fighting right now we should be winning winning really hard the only thing we need to be a little aware of here is the wukong so we kind of gotta gotta be a little little careful versus him but apart from that we are just in such a good spot uh, and with kaisa especially in the laning phase i see this being very effective is if you get like weighed up with using your w till you're missing the last two plasma on the target and then use it because pretty often i see at least on lower elos that people are not really aware of your plasma before it's too late if they have two plasma they're still like i'm good but okay we can actually go for a trade here I should be able to finish this real quick. There we go. Perfect. So as you see, we're just super strong and we're getting more and more gold because they're just disrespecting us. All right. So in a moment, we're going to have the Drake back up. It's going to be up in one minute. And for that reason, we're backing now because we want to make sure that we spend as much gold as we can before the next objective. So you're gonna go back buy another pickaxe that's an extra 25 extra damage and think about this before every objective that you want to make sure you spend your gold so look at the timers be like okay one minute till drake within the next 15 to 20 seconds i should be starting my back uh if possible so i need to shove this lane or i need to do something to free myself up for this back and make sure that i get like spent my gold like you could honestly quite honestly at lower elos you can be losing your lane and being behind and once you get to objectives if you have good good backs you might actually have an item advantage because people are this bad at timing their their backs 
So kind of take advantage of this. It is really freaking important. All right, so we're going to make sure we have our control what's down. We are missing a front line right now. And the thing is, in this game, in this match, uh, we didn't really have anyone picking any really good uh, any really good front lines. And that's something we got to be really aware of. I want to see if I can... Uh, I'm going to reposition down here to, to ensure that I don't have enemies running around behind me. Because that positioning was getting a little bit awkward. All right, we're going with the team here and we should be able to just I'm going to have to flash here. We're going to try and get away, but this this rise old kind of put us in a rough spot like we had to go with. But yeah, I should probably start up backing up to the tower here and just kind of waiting for a better target. I went directly onto the Twitch, which is I don't think that was the correct choice. Well, it was good getting him down. Don't get me wrong. But by doing this, I was basically standing still waiting for uh, the rest of their team to dive in on us. I should have moved a little bit back, waited for whoever dives in on the team and kill that target. And I could probably have turned this fight into a victory. But because I also went the greedy route of going for the Twitch right here, who probably would have died regardless of whether or not I helped or not, then we actually end up losing this fight. So as an ADC play a bit more safe and at this point like these this positioning literally ended up losing us the fight and yes i did not use the uh oh i need to be really careful here and again as you can see i was kind of holding on to my e until until that um until wukong uh dove in on me and then i used my old or my E to, uh, to reposition and uh, kind of get out of his ability. And if he would have gotten close enough again and I felt like I was in a danger of dying, then what I could do is I could also use my ult again since it was off cooldown. So this is kind of what you want to keep thinking about. Using these things defensively and sometimes you can use it defensively aggressively. I know that sounds weird. I guess you could call that offensively, but use it... Like, if somebody dives in on you on the back line and you can't get them off you, then you can use your ult if you have Plasma on a target somewhere uh, on their back line or far away or somebody that's out of position. You can use it on them to really get a good distance from whoever is trying to kill you. Uh, but also, um, also be able to kind of assassinate them. So that's going to be really nice. Anyway, we'll move back up here. We are getting pretty close to finishing off our Infinity Edge, which is honestly gonna start making us absolutely ridiculous we are dealing a lot of damage at this point we have pretty decent farm and we're just overall in a really good spot and with this baron buff things are looking really good for us so let's make sure we just get the next thing here okay he really wants that sorry dude okay you can have it um all right that's bad We're just going to try and buy as much time as we can. I am probably going to die here. I went out too far. Um, but I honestly must admit, I did not expect Wukong here. I don't know if we saw him walk over this ward. I didn't, at least. So this was an overextend, 100% for sure. But it's it's a sad thing to, to die to. <laughs> I'm going to be very honest. Um, but yeah, this kind of comes to show that even though we are very strong at this point then we're not unkillable and you want to stick with the teammate and quite honestly your support hopefully should also stick with you but otherwise you'll have to adapt uh if uh, or sona had been on us yeah probably we should be able to beat uh wukang then but by ourselves he simply just has too much reset with his uh let's see we should i think we should have enough we uh, sell darns there we go Sadly, I don't have enough for a control ward also. Uh, but then we should have enough to, to basically kill him. But the issue for us in this match, generally speaking, is that for some reason, we have basically no front line. We have a rise top, which is literally the closest we have to a front line in this game. And that's not a front line at all. 
um and that makes it really difficult for us to to play behind the front line so our front line in this is basically or assassin or shaker and rice that is that is the, the closest but they don't have a lot of sustain so we're generally gonna have to just win by positioning and win by catching people out of position like they have much better team fighting potential than we do also i forgot we needed to buy executioners calling we should have had this a long time ago i'm gonna make sure we buy it on the next back but we should have actually have bought this more or less in the laning phase all right i don't even if i hit that w i do not want to use my ult uh to reposition because then i don't have it oh i'm not gonna go with that one this time because i'm a little too afraid i don't know what's in here and that's something also be a little aware of you can see if i jumped over here 100 i would have gotten caught by this uh wukong and yes we might lose the fight here but we i would just have been dead as well if i went with 100 okay yep there's the uh the wukong and we're super afraid of that guy all right so the rice ults right now he had a good one but he's kind of being a bit overconfident with them now he's using them into uh into areas where we have no information of where the enemy is positioned we know they're in there but we don't know it specifically who is where and this is something that as a rice player you need to be more aware of because he is literally like those olds are literally killing us like yes i did not go with but if i went with there there's a 95 percent chance that the result would have been the same as it was there we would go in there we don't know where they are wukong would would maybe be in a really good position to just uh kill us and we would be sitting there being like yes <laughs> so in the meantime here we're just using the time to gather as much gold as we possibly can uh because at the end of the day this is what's gonna make us win so we're making sure that we keep farming gold and don't ever as an adc don't ever start like slacking on this into the mid to late game it is so freaking important that you keep your farm up all right so let's move back up uh stick behind or sona okay so apparently that Soraka was out of position and got caught that's perfect so now we can actually go for we should be able to push and when you are pushing on kaisa the thing is that she has kind of a shorter range than a lot of other adcs and for this reason it's very hard for you to poke turrets uh, and you'll kind of have to do this in a more safe manner so you basically walk back and forth to the turret with your team and you just do like one auto attack back out so you basically if you if we say this is the turret and it's still there you walk up you shoot you walk back as the enemy kind of goes a little forward you want to make sure that you stay sa safe at all times because since you have a shorter range it's also going to be a lot easier for the enemy team to just fully initiate on you all right we know next drake is or baron's coming up in 20 seconds this is a bit of a late back but we'll go for it anyway because we really do need uh we really do need that executioner's calling and we're gonna start building our mortal reminder and hopefully this will help out help out a lot i think as our last item we might go for a guardian angel but right now i actually feel like something like a bloodthirster uh considering the setup we have might make a bit more sense so i can uh so i can hopefully uh stay in the fight a bit longer i feel like that might make more sense all right we know the rest of the team is closer to drake so i can actually go for this offensive play to catch out their soraka she's a super important target so we'll just do that this should be a free baron for us now we know this guy's coming in behind us he cannot hit us so we want to stay back again the issue right here is we're caught between two two uh parts of the enemy and we don't want it to stay this way we really want to be aware of that of that wukong if he came up behind us i would have pushed in here in order to uh, to have as much range as possible versus uh both parts of the enemy but right here we can actually just push 
This will most likely, unless they screw up, and we'll just burst everything we can here. It should be enough to kill this target. Okay, with this plate, it might we might actually be able to finish the game, which is really nice. Otherwise, it is going to be at a pure minimum a free Baron, unless people do throw it away. Okay, that was a really poor play. Oh, I messed up. I messed up super bad. All right. I'm going to hang back a little bit. I think right here, going for... Uh, okay, going for the Drake is actually a really good call here. Because the Drake is going to be the Mountain Drake, which is really freaking big for us. So we're going to kind of wait for Rice here as well. Boom. Oh my god. We messed it up. I'm sorry, Rice. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you can see how we're all the time we're trying to and I think this is a really good mindset when you are playing ADC in general is kind of all the time try and think about your positioning think about where everybody is and say okay, I want to have at a pure maximum I want to make sure I have all enemies in front of me you don't want to have some behind you and you don't want to have uh, like some of the side and everything you want to have everybody gathered uh, in one direction because this makes it a lot easier for you to kind of find out where your positioning needs to be because you can see when Wukong came in here and the enemy team was here the other part of them then I was kind of in a rough position because if I move down here Wukong can hit me if I go up here then they can go for me so my best position at this that point would be to oh well I need to be careful here uh, would be to move in here in order to make sure that all of the enemies funnel into to being in front of me again but then again it comes down to how my team reacts and that's where things become tricky is if my team pushes down here i go out here then oh crap yeah this is exactly what i mean yeah i am 100 percent dead 100 percent. there's no way i'm gonna take whatever i can with me but this is exactly what i mean you do not want to have this scenario where you have some enemies in front of you, some on the side and some behind you. You want to make sure you're always positioned in a way where everybody's in front of you and you can just hit the closest target. And it's better for you to not have full uptime on the enemy and kind of position in a way where you're safe and can do damage than it is to just go all in and you just instantly die anyway. So really think about this when playing ADC and with Kaisa you do have your all for repositioning like this scenario was hidden here if I had a plasma on a target further away I could use my all down there and just get out of that danger and put myself in well not in less of a danger or well hopefully less of a danger but I would be able to at least uh make things or or Put myself in a less tricky situation because right here i have three people on me like any other position at that point would be better because like two enemies is on me is better than three so we can all agree so in that sense always try and think about your ult is really really good for repositioning and for just putting yourself in a better situation and so is your e because of the invis with your E, it can be a really good idea to redirect it. So when running somewhere that you run in the direction, then use it and then you turn around the other way to kind of redirect. Oh, crap. I used it before he was here. Um, in order to kind of trick him into not knowing where you are. Uh, this can be super important. And I chose to go for the Bloodthirster route here instead of the Guardian Angel. Just because i feel like i need the sustain uh i feel like it is generally speaking us that needs to carry this and taking that into consideration then yeah i feel like we really really do need uh or guardian or or bloodthirster this is at least in my experience the easiest way for me to carry it because it's gonna ensure that i can survive this wukong's uh burst or not burst but i can I can out sustain him if I can get a little distance and I should be able to get the distance because of our E and our uh, ult. So yeah, things are so far going very well. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, team fighting is very much like in the laning phase, your Carthian rain, your Q, you want to make sure 
that if you're trying to burst down a target that you do position yourself such that only one target is within your radius of your Icarthian reign. And the way you can do this is you can basically make sure you move to the sides. Like, let's say I want to hit only Rise here. Then, well, I don't want to position here. I want to try and go to basically as far down in the map as possible such that I can actually time it, like right here, such that, I, that just him is inside the radius of my Icarthian reign. That way you do optimal burst on the target which is really really freaking good all right i'm gonna be throwing out my w i am Ooh. i thought i could get the uh the soraka there but i don't know who got him i think the rice did i think rice got her all right so we should be able to push to victor we have baron buff we are gonna get two in hips down just gonna throw my W. I'm not gonna go in with my ult because I know that their Wukong is looking for me. And we can see right here. If we can stay on the back line, should be able to just finish off the rest of them. Super nice. And it's gonna be a GG. But as you guys can see, like a big part of playing Kaisa is using your ult and your E for repositioning and kind of like outsmarting your enemies with it so this got another victory this was really really nice really enjoyed this game but yeah kaisa is an amazing champion she's so fun to play she does absolutely like ridiculous amounts of damage but remember that you never want to stand and basically headbutt together with the enemy you want to make sure that you just keep keeping your distance to the enemy and just smash off your damage keep your farm up in the late game Use your Carthian Reign so it only hits that one target that you're trying to kill. Because that way you're going to have optimal damage or burst damage. Unless you're trying to spread the damage between targets. But there are very few situations when that's what you want to go for. And kind of have a backup plan in your head for your ult or your E if he gets up close. You can even use your W if you see he's coming to you and you know, okay, I am screwed if this guy gets to me. I know he's probably going to to get to me very soon then actually use your w on another target so you have that plasma on the other target and when when your when the threat comes to you and he literally is about to hit you you can just ult and go to that other target and reposition he's gonna be like oh crap and he's gonna have to waddle all the way back over after you and by the time he does that you've probably won the team fight but be very careful with trying to go for the back line like if you have a lot of experience with Kai'Sa. Of course, you can do some plays if you see them being out of position. Then Kai'Sa is a pretty decent duelist, but you don't want to go duel something like a vein that just condemns you into the wall. Uh, you want to make sure that it's stuff where you... Like this Twitch, I knew for a fact, if he went out of position on a lane or something else, I could do my W ult down there. I could come out of bush and just duel him straight up. I would win that fight without a freaking doubt. And if I needed extra protection, I can just use my ult for the extra shield. Uh, but yeah, I hope this was somewhat helpful and gave you an idea of how I think when I play Kai'Sa and kind of how you want to play her playstyle. But just think of her, she is an ADC. You want to be going for whatever is closest to you. You want to play safe. You want to maintain a high gold income because like ADCs are first really, really strong when they have a lot of gold. So make sure that you just get that. And in the laning phase, it doesn't matter if you absolutely stomp your enemies or if you just go somewhat equal with them in CS. When you get into the late game, you should be able to uh, to, to do a lot of damage anyway and do really well because she scales super well into late game. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a lot of fun to make. If you did, then make sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed watching this, learned a thing or two or something. And uh, yeah, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so down below. Join in on our awesome community. And if you want to see me live, go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live. I stream every single Friday. But yeah, that is going to be it for this one. As always, stay awesome, have fun, and take it easy, guys.